All right, welcome. Um, for today's class, you're gonna need at least two blocks, uh, something similar. And as always, you can always find something like a blanket or a pillow for petting, if you, especially if you have um, sensitive knees. Once you get that everything, come into Bhattakonasana, bring the soles of the feet together. Just let the knees open to the sides. If you feel like you're, you're kind of hunching your back, um, you can prop yourself onto the folded blanket or pillow. You can also move yourself close by a wall so you can lean your back onto the wall. And all of these things, this pose and the following postures can be done on your back as well. Once you arrived, Baddha Konasana, grab the ankles with your hands. And start, pay a little bit of attention to your breath. If you feel like your tension is too much on your knees, you can also bring the blocks outside of the thighs and to catch the weight of them. Push the heels into the ground, but also pull through the hand. So you're opening your chest. And soften your gaze until you fully close eyes. You may find breathing in Bhattakonasana is a teeny tiny bit more restrictive than usual. Make sure that you give yourself enough support to help with that, like blocks underneath your thighs, or move yourself against the wall. If that's still too much, you can also cross the legs into Sukhasana. Each inhale, sink all the way into the pelvis. Let it be heavy. Next off, let the chest fall back towards you. Relax the shoulders. On the bottom of the next exhale, Bow your head towards the heart. And slowly blink open the eyes. Grab the left foot with your left pinky outside. And just do some rock side to side. Be up and down. Release the left foot down. And grab the right foot with the right pinky outside.
Yeah, some rock side to side or up and down here. And release the right foot down, bring the soles of feet together again. Bring the hands behind you. Have um, fingertips facing forward and press the hips up. This is still early stage. So only to the point that you feel like you're opening space of the hip flexors, but not too much effort. A couple of weeks ago, we explored the idea of Swadhyaya self-study. We're gonna continue on that concept today. One more big inhale. Lift the hips high. And exhale, release the hips down. And bring the feet as wide as a mat. Keep hands behind you. And release both knees to the left side. Pause there for a moment. See if there's any tightness in your hip sockets. Next, I'll come back to center and release the knees to the right side. Notice there might be a difference on both sides. Perhaps start thinking about what ha might have caused that kind of difference. Can be genetic issue, can be injury in the past, or can be um, your work habits. One more big inhale. Next, I'll come back to center. And bring the soles of feet together. We'll press the hips toward the sky one more time. Press the knees toward the ground. One more big inhale. Next, I'll release the hips down. And there's some shoulder rolls here, and neck rolls here. And when you're ready, cross the left leg in front of the right, come into Sukhasana. Adjust uh, whatever you need. Then you need to hop yourself onto a folded blanket if you haven't done so. Reaching the crown of the head toward the sky and bring the right hand on top of the left knee and left hand behind you and twist yourself toward the left side. Gaze through the left shoulder all the way to the back. Inhale, reaching through the crown of the head, twist through the spine, and exhale, revolve the chest toward the back. Come back to center. Take a big inhale. And exhale, start walk your hands towards the front. Reaching through those fingertips. Now exhale, fold your chest towards the ground, maybe a little bit, maybe a lot. Depends on your flexibility. Oftentimes, most of them come from your genetic reasons. And if this is uncomfortable for you, there might be many things that rising up in your mind. Can be, oh, this is difficult, I gotta retreat. This is not deep enough for me. I gotta go deeper. Some of them might, some of those thoughts might not be pretty. Instead of just sitting with the pose, you also sit with those ugliness and see 
if you can identify where those are from, even though it might mean that you feel so uncomfortable, not physically, but with that thought. And start walk yourself back up again. I'm gonna do another side. Between the sides, you can extend the legs and do some leg shake. Then do the windshield wiper, the legs again. And once you're ready, cross your right leg in front of you. Hands on the knees and reaching the crown of the head toward the sky. And bring the left hand to the right knee and right hand behind you. And how reaching to the crown of the head. And exhale, revolve through the spine and rotate the chest toward the back. Gaze through the right shoulder all the way to the back space. Deep inhale, reaching tall, press into the right fingertips. Now exhale, revolve your ribcage, your chest toward the back. And come back to center. Take a big inhale. Now exhale, bring your hands to the ground and walk your hands toward the front. We've been into this posture before, just with the different cross legs. And whenever you're ready, take a big inhale and melt your chest toward the ground on the exhale. And that's the other side, all kind of thoughts might emerge on your mind, including some uncomfortable ones. So you can sit with it for a little bit longer today. especially if you know this is not causing your, you any physical harm. Otherwise, you can adjust it as much as you need. And start walk the hands slowly back towards you. Bring the hands behind you and bring the feet as wide as the mat again and release the wood knees side to side. Next time when it's to the left, pause it for a moment. Notice if there's any difference in your hip sockets right now. And bring back to center and release the knees to the right side. See if there's less of uncomfortableness. Bring the knees back to center and cross your legs again and come into table pose. Hands right underneath your shoulders. And knees right underneath, uh, underneath your hips joints.
move through some cow and cat, and how open the chest, lower the belly, lift up the tailbone. Exhale, round up your upper back, push into the hands. Make sure that you align the movement with the rhythm of your breath instead of the other way. Then add any other variations here, including flipping the hands toward the back, side to side, or a long cow by moving the knee to the slightly to the back, and cat with your knees behind your hips, or even slightly move into child pose. Any variation you are in, make sure that you are moving with the pace of your breath. Well, slowly with the pace of the breath, which sometimes creates a kind of rush, that kind of urgency as well, which is not pretty to look at if you've been practicing for a while. You'll be, you'll be wondering that where is that rush, urgency coming from? And see if you can allow yourself to be a little bit slower today. If you tend to be a Russian person. Once you're back to neutral, bring the knees slightly behind the hips into a knee plank. Push into the palms. And how reaching to the crown of the head. And exhale, bend your elbows, hugging the elbows in, and slowly move to Chaturanga. Maybe even pause in halfway, and lower all the way down to your belly. Keep your elbows hugging in. Press into the feet. Inhale, lift the chest up. And exhale, reach the palms toward the back. Palms facing down, big thumbs facing out. Shalabhasana. And now we lift through the chest. Next, perhaps lift up the feet off from the ground. One more big inhale. Exhale, release down. Bring hands by the chest and hug the elbows in. Push to the table or high plank. And push your tailbones up into the sky, into downward facing dog. If this is the first down dog of yours today, make sure you give yourself enough space by bending one leg and another. And also rock into high plank and come back to downward facing dog or any other variation that allows you to make some space in the back of the legs. You can also replace it with table or child pose if down dog is not suitable for you today. If you're in downward facing dog, press into the palms evenly into all the finger pads and press the chest toward the thigh bones. Lift the tailbones up and release the heels toward the ground. Inhale, lift the left leg up. Exhale, bring the left foot close to the left thumb. Release the right knee down. Find the blocks you have them. Pass into the blocks or the ground. Lift the chest up. The exhale, press the back of the right knee into the sky. And how reaching to the crown of the head. The exhale, release the right knee down. And how press the right knee up. And exhale, release the right knee down. Continue a couple more rounds on your own with the breath pace.
if on stay on the top of the feet, foot, right foot is too much for you, you can also tuck the right toes, which makes a tiny bit easier on lifting up your right knee. Uh, Sam up, release the right knee down, spin your right shin to be parallel with the shoulder edge of the mat and walk yourself to the right side and bring the left hand against the left knee, right arm extend toward the back into a supportive warrior two. Use the left hand to press the left knee open. You can stay here. You can also grab the back of the skull with your right hand. Rotate your chest toward the sky. Pressing the left knee into the left arm, but also the other way around as well. One more big inhale. Exhale, bring both hands toward the front. Spin your right shin back to the center. And come up onto the pinky edge of your left foot. Use the left hand to press the left knee open. Press into the right hand. Rotate the chest up. Bring the left knee back to center, left hand down. You can move to one downward facing dog. You can also step your left foot back into a knee plank. Move through some counter catch. You can also come into a knee plank directly. And if you feel like you've got enough practice from knee plank, you can also tuck your toes, lift up your knees into a high plank. Wherever you are, take a big inhale and exhale, bend your elbows, lower all the way down to the belly. Slowly with exhale. Inhale, lift the chest up, lift the toes up. Perhaps extend the arms back into Shalabhasana, locust pose. Take one more big inhale. Reaching through the toes, reaching through the crown of the head and the toes. Now exhale, release hands down, hands by the chest. And press yourself to high plank or table into a downward facing dog. And press the palms evenly. Press the chest toward the thigh bones and rotate the biceps towards the front. Whenever you're ready, lift up your right leg and step the right foot to the right hand. Release your left knee down. Find the blocks if you have them. Hands push into the blocks. And help spread the collarbone. Exhale, you can tuck your left toes. You can also lift, stay on the top of the feet. Lift up your left knee. Inhale, reaching through the crown of the head. Next, I'll release the left knee down. Continue a couple more rounds on your own. Make sure you follow the pace of your breath. Next time when your knee is up, release your left knee down. Spin your left shin to prepare with the shoulder edge of the mat. 
and climb your right arm against your right knee. Extend your left arm towards the back, support your warrior two. Create that kind of resistance between the right arm and the right leg. Option to grab the back of the skull with your left hand and open the chest toward the sky with the bottom part of you stay the same. Your right knee still open to the right side, still making space in the right hip socket. Take one more big inhale, open the chest. And exhale, curve your both hands down and spin your right shin back. Left hand down. And use the right hand to push your right knee open. Come up onto the pinky edge of your right foot. Extend the right arm up. Keep pressing the right knee down. If you feel like it's not doing itself, you can also bring the right arm back down to use the right hand, push it open. Bring both hands down, you can pass through some down facing dog, you can also step back into a high plank. Tuck your toes, lift your knees up. Take a big inhale. Exhale, bend to elbows, move in between. And this time, inhale, pull your chest forward, flip your toes into an upward facing dog. Exhale, push your tailbones up into downward facing dog. Atta Mukha Shonasana. Next exhale, bend into your legs step by step, a hop forward. Raise all the way up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hand to heart center. Move to three rounds of salute by your own choice. It can be Sun A, it can be Sun B. And I do remind you today if you tend to go for one of them. Maybe today is time to try a different salute. Even though it might mean it's something that you're not so familiar with or not so comfortable with. And flow with a kind of uncomfortableness. On top of your ownership with your practice today, see analyze where the kind of uncomfortableness is from. If it's because you're not familiar with it. If so, why are you uncomfortable with something that you're not familiar with? Or it could be any other reason. But the purpose here is looking at something that you do not want to look at before and start turning your head away from it. See if you can sit through it today.
can be so many things in this simple flow that creates that kind of ugliness that you've been neglecting. Like, you know, you're supposed to give yourself a pausing moment and edge down back. Maybe you were not doing it because you were rushing to somewhere. You know, the right thing to do is to match the movement with the pace of breath, but you might not be doing it for all sorts of reasons. Or other kind of scenarios. Where we all finish your flow, and we all meet at the top of the mat. In Tadasana, hands by the side. Briefly close the eyes. Re engage with your attention by Pulling the knees toward the pelvis. Press into the heels, the balls of the feet. Pull the navel toward the spine. Next, just slowly blink open your eyes. Shift the weight onto your right foot. Bring the left foot either close to the right ankle or right shin or above right knee into the right inner thigh and to a tree pose, Rikshasana. And bring yourself close to the wall so you can rest your right hand on the wall for support. Gather hands in front of your heart. Just slowly raise uh, your prayer toward the sky. Continue press open the left knee. And press the right inner thigh into the bottom of the left foot as well. Reaching to through the prayer. And exhale, slowly release the prayer down and cross your left ankle over the right knee and sit your hips slow into a cross angle chair, figure four. A more long breath here. Are you forgetting pressing open the left knee? If you are, you can use a left hand to help to bring that memory back. One more big inhale. Next, so stand up onto your right leg and extend the left leg toward the back. Inhale, arms up by the ears. Actually, find the blocks into a runner's lunge, hands on the blocks, and walk yourself to the left side. Parallel your feet, open the toes towards the sides sit down into a supported squat. Inhale, turn yourself toward the back of the mat, bending the left leg, straighten the right. Walk yourself back to the right. Open your toes to the sides, 
and sit your hips down into a squat. Walk yourself to the front. Bend into right leg. We do this slowly with intention. And then walk yourself to the left side. And sit your hips down into a supported squat. Come all the way to the back. Bend into the left leg. Walk yourself to the right side. Bend into the legs. Squatting. And last time together. And do two more rounds on your own. Be honest with the pace of your breath. Inhale into a runner's lunge. And exhale, sit into a squat. Last time when you're in the squat, um, runner's lunge, bring arms by the ears. The exhale, open the chest to the left side, bend into the right leg, spin down your left heel, come into warrior two, reaching through both fingertips towards opposite directions. Next, exhale, reverse. And how reaching to the right finger. That's it. Exhale, both hands down, framing your right foot, step the right foot back. High plank, you can move through the vinyasa. You can also move through child pose or camel pose. Any option that you like to have. We'll meet in downward facing dog. And from downward facing dog, step by step, a hop forward into the front of the mat. Rise all the way up. Exhale, hand to your heart center. Shift weight into your left foot. And bring the right foot over to the right ankle, the right shin, or to the left inner th thigh. Tree pose on the left leg. Press the right foot into the left inner thigh and the the other way around as well. Join the hands in front of the heart. Find the justice spot in front of you to focus on. And continue press open the right knee. If you forgot to do that, you can use the right hand to gently push it open. Once you bring it back that memory, join your right hand back to the prayer again and start slowly Rise your prayer toward the sky. Now we're reaching out to the prayer. And then exhale, release both hands down. And cross your right ankle over your left knee. And sit your hips back down into a figure four. Again, here you can use your right hand to help your right knee to remember to press open again. One more big inhale. And exhale, right all the way up onto your left leg and extend your right leg back. Land your right foot down. Find the blocks if you have them. Inhale, open the chest. And exhale, walk yourself to the right side. 
toes out, sit your hips down into goddess squat. Inhale, turn yourself toward the back of the mat, open the chest. Exhale, walk yourself to the left side, sit your hips down, goddess squat. Inhale, turn your chest forward. Run a slime, just one round. Do four more rounds on your own. When the flow gets repetitive, and as mentioned before, all kind of thoughts tend to rise up in your mind. Especially if you're so used to practice with all kinds of fancy postures, and this might just not look too difficult or too yoga practice for you. You might be shocked at why am I thinking this way? Maybe it's a good time to sit with that kind of thought. Even though it might mean that's not so pretty to look at. Next time when you arrive into runner's lunge, bend into your left leg. Rise all the way up into high lunge with your arms by the ears. And now reaching through both fingertips. Next, up, turn your chest facing toward the right side. Spin down your right heel. Inhale, reaching through both fingertips. Next up, reverse your warrior. Release both hands down and step your left foot back into a high plank. You can move through some chaturanga. You can also move through some child pose. And either way, we're going to meet in downward facing dog. We're in downward facing dog, step by step, hop forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold over the legs. Raise all the way up. And start shift weight into your right foot. You can join your left foot into your right shin, your right inner thigh. Or this time you can also bring the right foot into your right hip crease into a half lotus. Option to join the hands together after finding a justice spot in front of you to focus on. Option to rise up your prayer toward the sky. You can lower the prayer if you like to. You can also start slowly bend into the right foot, lower the hips down, into a figure four variation. You 
will this arm down be a little bit more stable? And now reaching through the fingertips and the tailbone toward the ground. One more big inhale. And exhale, rise all the way up. Step your left foot back toward the back of the space. High lunge. You can find the blocks if you know you need them. Otherwise, turn your chest toward the left side and sit your hips down into a goddess squat. You can also squeeze your shoulder blades together, cactus the arms. And how turn your chest toward the back, bending through the left leg, straighten the right knee. And exhale, turn your chest to the right, goddess pose. Inhale, turn your chest forward. High lunge toward the front. That's one round. Let's do three, around, three more rounds together. And exhale, goddess. Be honest with the pace of your breath. Last time when you're in high lunge, bend into the right leg. Open the chest to the left side, spin down your left heel. Reaching through both fingertips. Next, reverse your warrior. Inhale, reaching to the right fingers. Exhale. Call your both hands down. And this time, walk your hands to the left side. Parallel your feet and fold over the white legs. You can bring the hands into the same line with the feet and bend to elbows. Walk yourself back to the front again. Step your right foot back. Move to vinyasa. Any other back bend choice or simply child pose you like to. And we'll all meet in downward facing dog. Step by step, a half forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold all the legs. Right all the way up. Last round on each this side. Shift the weight onto your left foot. And draw your right foot into left ankle, your left shin, or right, left inner thigh. You can also bring the right foot into your left hip crescent. Hip flexor, actually. Hold your right foot with your left hand to the beginning. Use your right hand gently push open the right knee toward the ground. And once you feel like you create a stable point over there, gaze forward or down or anywhere that you like to focus on. 
can start a slowly release the left hand, press the right foot into the left thigh, and the other way around. And join the prayer in front of the heart. And raise up the prayer toward the sky. Now reaching through the prayer. Exhale, option to release your hands down and bend into your left leg and sit your tailbones down. Inhale, rise up. Extend your right leg back. And step your right foot down. Both arms by the ears. High lunge. Max off, chest facing on to the right. Toes out and sit into goddess. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. And Inhale, chest facing toward the back. Arms by the ears. And exhale, sit into goddess. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, squeeze the shoulder blades together. High lunge to the front. Last time, bend into the left leg. Reaching through the fingertips. Next, open the chest to the right side. Open the arms. Spin down your right heel. Reaching through the fingertips. Reverse the warrior. Power your both hands down. Walk your hands toward the right side, pair of the feet, and fold over the legs. And as the other side, you can bend the elbows. If you like to lower your the crown of the head towards the ground, go ahead. If you like to, but it's still some distance between the crown of the head and ground, it can bring a block the tallest height underneath it. And if upside down is in your practice, this is where it can happen. Whatever format of form of upside down you're in, start walk yourself toward the front and step your left foot back. Into high plank. Draw your left knee into the chest, squeeze it in. And step your left foot back. Draw your right knee into the chest, squeeze it in. Step the back. Let's do one more time on each side. Left knee into the chest. Step the back. Right knee into the chest. Step the back. And raise the knees down. And sit on your hips. Pop yourself onto a folded blanket if you know you're going to need them. 
cross your leg with your left shin to the front. Grab the left foot with your hands, left pinky outside. And as the rock side to side as we did in the beginning of the class again. You can stay here. You can also bring the left of heel onto the right thigh. And stack your left shin with your on top of right shin. Fire lock pose. If it's too much, you can also bring a block to hold it tight underneath your left knee to catch it. Another option today is, as we were standing, you can draw the left foot into your right hip crease into half lotus. The same as fire lock, you can also bring a block and then use the left knee to catch it. Maybe uncomfortable, especially considering we don't usually walk this way, sit this way. But do choose a form that creates a little bit uncomfortableness for you. At least, instead of turning, totally turning away from this practice. And either way you are, start walk the hands toward the front and fold the chest toward the ground. And you probably already know that we're going to do the other side. If you feel like this side is your tighter side, see if you can give it a cup of more breath than the other side. The same goes the other way. If you know your other side will be tighter, you give the other side a little bit longer as well. So walk yourself back up. Release the legs. Shake the legs. Do the windshield wiper side to side again. Once you're ready. Come into Sukhasana with your right shin to the front. Grab the right foot with your right pinky finger out. Mark side to side. Draw the left shin slightly out and bring the right foot on top of the left thigh. Stack your right shin over the left into fire lock. And same with the other side, you can use a block and then use your right shin, right knee to catch it. And another option is bring the right heel into the left hip crease. Into a half lotus. And just as our free flow through the salute, you have all the freedom to make it shorter or longer uh, and the variation accordingly. Just don't turn away from that kind of uncomfortableness.
And in fact, I do encourage you to sit a little bit longer today if this is your not so pretty side. Wherever you are, start walk your hands toward the front and lower your chest toward the ground. Once you're ready to come out, start walk yourself slowly. Come up and shake the legs and do some windshield wiper and then side to side again. And come all the way down to the back. Once you arrive to the back, stack the blocks and then you see a sacrum. The low is the height, stack them on top of each other. And draw the heels towards your hips. And lift your hips up and slide the blocks in and then the sacrum supported bridge. It's just to reopen the hip space, the front hip space that have been compressed. And if you like to keep it more active, you can also lift the hips away from the blocks toward the sky. If you're in an active back bend, lower the hips back to the support. Extend the legs long. And if there's any other shape that you like to include in your practice today, please use this one minute or so to finish it. Otherwise, when we're ready, slide the blocks away, release the hips down, and hug the knees into the chest one more time. Shabbasana. And if you, if your body natural guides you into Bhattakonasana in Shavasana, still make sure that you put the blocks and then use your thigh bones to cut them.
you're ready to come out. We get your toes, your fingertips. And carefully draw one leg in another. And roll onto one side and slowly transition yourself into a comfortable seat. Palms facing down, resting on the top of the knees. And the thoughts that rose up and during your practice today, if you just stay around, just spend a couple more moments sit with them. If your mind drifted away, draw it back using the sound of your breath. Draw it back with the thought that has been rising during the practice that serves as the anchor at this moment. And if it resonates, you get your hands in front of the heart. The palm of can help. Exhale, bow your head toward the heart. And slowly blink open the eyes. Thank you. <laughs> 